Coin Talk community. Today we have an AMA with uh, Valor Coin here to talk about that. It's Ken Shamrock. Um, you might know him as uh, was recognised one of the greatest fighters of mixed martial arts in the world. Um, so yeah, if we could just maybe go into a bit of your background uh, and history, uh, Ken, that'd be great. Yeah, you know, first of all, um, I want to say thank you for having us. Uh, we much appreciated. We've been oh, I don't know. Last probably 10 days, uh, we've been on the TG, uh, talking to different people, getting into communities, um, doing uh, AMAs, and uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot different <laughs> than what I'm used to, obviously fighting in the cage and things of that nature, but also touched a little bit on business and stuff uh, in my career. It's definitely different than that. The, the crypto space is so unique and different than anything that I've experienced. So um, I just want to say thank you guys for allowing us to come on and, and talk to you. Um, I want to thank uh, the Valor team. Um, that is the team that has supported me for many years. Um, and and they're, they've been in uh, a support and helping me through these times of, of, of learning um, the greed team, uh, yeah, so the greed team has done a tremendous job, especially in the TG space where um, there's been some <laughs> unique individuals who have come on at different times and, and uh, you know, those ones that know it all and, and, and tell you how things should be and what you're going to do or what this can be. And, and I thought that they've done a tremendous job of navigating some of those things and being patient and working through those things. And so I want to thank the greed team for doing that because I've seen some, some of the things that were, were going on there and um, they've handled it much better than I would have. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, Captain, um, obviously, you know, for us, um, he is a, a tremendous, um, tremendous person to go to, to help uh, us understand uh the direction that we're going and where we're trying to go. So I want to thank Captain for for his time with us and helping us understand that and the strategic partnership that we've been able to build together. I thank you, uh, Captain. Um, and uh, you know, right now, I think what I want to do before I get into um, kind of where, where where I want to introduce myself and kind of give you a, a background of who I am, where I came from. Uh, I want to I want to bring on um, some of our team members so that they can explain to you a little bit about um, who they are and some of their background. Um, so if you just bear with us, we'll, we'll get through that and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to the, uh, the tokenomics. So first I'd like to bring up uh, Matty McNone. I hope I said that. And I always mess his name. I, I know him the guy forever, but um, I'm going to bring on Matty, a business part. He's my business partner um, and uh, business developer has probably been a part of, uh, I mean, everything from movies uh, to to the MMA, whether it's UFC, Valor, you name it. He's He's been a part of everything. So uh, it's been uh, a, a great opportunity for me to have him as a, as my business partner. So, if, Matt, do you want to jump on and, and give him a little bit about yourself? <clears throat> Maddie's raising his hand right now. Oh, All right, let me find him. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'll just uh, go down. Uh, Oh, yeah. uh, Nicole and uh, Sheriff Shadri, Crypto Mint. Yeah, he's uh, we got him? Yeah. Where's he? Hey, guys, I'm here. Uh, there thank he is. You. Oh, here hey, guys, thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Just want to say hi. Yes, like uh, Ken said, I've known him forever, uh, you know, from the fight world, actually. You know, we, uh, I trained under the lion's den many many years ago but that's another story that's another life uh we've been in business for a number of years developing valor and a few other projects i myself like uh, ken said um have been in various industries new industries um what i would say you know sometimes disruptive industries i've been in the uh, hemp space the uh, hemp world and the medical marijuana world for 20 something years. I've done feature films. I've done movies. Uh, I own um, interest in a handful of video game businesses, music, you name it. Sort of, you know, uh, sort of what I would call a serial entrepreneur. I also work with many hedge funds from Goldman Sachs to smaller funds. So, you know, really excited about Valor, 
really excited about the crypto industry. It's the it's the future. That's why we're here. Very, very eager to uh, meet you all and dive in. And with that, I'll I'll hand it over. Thank you. Yeah, so I guess we'll jump on with um, with Andy. Andy, you want to jump on? Yeah, cool. I'll hop on. Uh, hop on real quick. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Andy Berlin. I'm with the Valor team. Um, kind of my specialty and focus is marketing and lead generation. Uh, me and the team, we've all known each other for quite a while, but that's that's where I came into play with uh, Steven. He's been my business partner for 10 years. And uh, we've worked with Maddie and Ken for the last uh, three plus years or so. And definitely looking forward to getting into the, the crypto space. We have quite an extensive marketing plan, um, not only just for Valor Sports, but the Valor Token, uh, as well as Valor Bare Knuckle. Uh, we do any and everything from uh, PPC lead generation to uh, press releases uh, with some of the biggest companies that are in the nation, thanks to uh, our team and some of the contacts that they've been able to to get over the years throughout their their different business ventures. Uh, we will be doing poo coin ads, making sure that we're at the top of of the everybody's eyeballs constantly. Coin market cap, coin gecko, uh, you name it. Through Ken's social, over five hundred thousand followers. Um, and like I said, we we are or my background is marketing and lead generation and user experience and that is what my focus is going to be is how we're able to incentivize fighters or different athletes to use the valor sports ecosystem and um you know take care of them long term make sure that they're that they're able to benefit from this this new emerging technology and um you know not get cut out of contracts and after their career is over it's just over we want to be able to incentivize all athletes that we we are in contact with um i think it's important to to note that we are valor sports but uh our our other main business is bare knuckle boxing but we are valor sports we cover a whole genre of different athletes that we'll be working with and and different niches um so that that's just kind of it for me just a, a two minute download um feel free to ask any questions or reference to marketing uh, you name it we'll be doing it lead generation is the name of the game uh we have our own ott platform that steven will probably touch on uh you can kind of think of that as kind of like our own fight tv or the espn app or uh, something of that nature. We have our own Valor OTT platform where we'll be constantly incentivizing our subscriber base to uh, obviously be purchasers and holders of the coin so that they can get discounts on merch or discounts on e on different events, discount on NFTs, etc. Um, so we are constantly going to be in the face of the marketplace, whether it's at our events or whether it's online or traditional marketing. Um, so that's that's my my download. I hope you guys got some good information from that. And uh, I'll be here for the duration of the call. And I look forward to any questions you guys might have. I appreciate it. I'm going to pass it on over uh, to Steve, I believe. Let him get into some tech and tokenomics. I appreciate you guys being here. Thanks, Andy. Um, so I've been working with Ken, as Andy said, for the last three or so years. i am uh, spent a lot of time doing uh, working for municipal, different governments, building technology, servers, working at university, radio stations, uh, commercial, B2B, consumer products, you name it. Um, we've done it. Um, so my technology extends you know, five years in broadcasting, 20 years in technology, 20 years in sales and marketing. Um, and we're happy to be a part of this project and been working with Ken um, for his personal brand, just kind of going through all the materials that he has. And just kind of, uh, and when I say materials, I mean, uh, for example, 
we went through his, he has 250 VHS tapes um, that we're converting over to uh, MP4 to create NFTs out of. Uh, so that's just one small um, oh, cool. piece of what we have here. But we've been having, I mean, the reason I mentioned that, so we've been having discussions with many different groups, uh, you know, crypto uh, developers or experts, if, they, if you want to call them that. Um, but we met we met Captain Awesome here in the Greed team. And um, I think it was the first time that um, we saw it as a, as a real strategic partnership um, where our developers, they understood I mean, their developers understood our vision and Ken's vision, and I'm going to pass it off to him in just a moment for him to explain a little bit about, about that. Um, but we've been working with the GREE team, and um, they're helping us develop this contract and deploy it, and basically hand-holding us through the entire process, allowing us to learn and be able to manage this for the long term. Um, and as some of the utility comes out. Um, I'll actually go into some of the tokenomics, and you know, we can. Um, I'll pass it back to Ken about some of his vision, and we can talk about utility from there. Um, so, just so everybody's aware. The, just so everybody's aware of um, the token the total coin supply is one billion. It's going to be a fifteen percent tax in and out. And coin holders will coin holders will receive eight percent in BNB rewards. Four percent will be going to the marketing wallet. Two percent reserved for liquidity, and there will be a one percent buyback. And upon launching, we're going to be we'll have staking available. Uh, right now, we're in the private sale, so there's a thirty percent discount, and uh, there's a max purchase of fifty BNB. And we're going to close the hard cap when we reach 750. So, uh, oh, cool. tokens. Right, so the pre sales going on at the moment, yeah. Uh, the private sales is that still open for investors? Private, yeah. We can whitelist some wallets. Um, after mm. this AMA, we can certainly get that taken care of. So, um, the, the tokens will be airdropped on December 11th, just so you know. So, um, there is a three month uh, invested period on this. So, you know, we have obviously other measures. We did that primarily because we wanted to spend a lot of time and you'll come to learn about the team and everybody here. We, we spent a lot of time in the foundation of things, whether it be the business or establishing this crypto uh, and utility and stuff like that. So through this, we've been able to have many different discussions about the technology um, and, and there's different ways that the crypto enables us to do that. Um, but before I do that, Ken, I, I want to kind of a little pass it back to you and Maddie, because I think this is an important piece for the, the group to understand about athletes and how they're performing, um, you know, the battle with big corps and owning their names and stuff like that, because it goes into how the blockchain enables us to protect our athletes. And then it goes, I'll go into more of the fun um, things as well. Ken, do you want to maybe tell your story from the beginning a little bit about your history and how you got into the fight space and what you discovered? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I know, especially since we've gotten into the tokenomics, um, I know you guys probably have questions and, and thoughts and, um, and we're going to do that. Um, but I want to, I want to kind of give you a, an understanding of, of, of who I am, obviously you got to know the team a little bit, uh, the Valor team, and and uh, of course I'm sure Captain will will chime in for the Greed team and the strategic partnership we've been able to develop uh, over the past couple of weeks. Um, but uh, I want to give you a little bit of a background of of you know some of the things that that I went through and how we got to where we are right now and my I guess vision. Uh, into the Valor BK and also the, under, the the little understanding I have with the the crypto ecosystem and trying to to put the uh, combat sport and the crypto space uh, together, trying to merge them together so they benefit one another. Uh, but but before we get there, uh, I want to give you a little bit of my background. 
Um, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. No, I was definitely um, in a very bad situation uh, at the age of 10 years old. Um, I had a uh, strong arm robbery. I'd gotten stabbed at 10 years old, uh, ended up um, being locked up in juvenile hall, um, became a ward of the court, which means the judge and the probation officer then became my parents. I was taken out of the home. Then I was placed in a bunch of facilities, probably five, six, seven different facilities, boys, work camps, group homes, you name it. I went through it either got kicked out or ran away. Um, and so that led me into more trouble. Ended up in the Shamrock Boys Home at 13 years old. Um, 13 years old, hence the last name Shamrock. I got adopted when I was 18. Bob and Dee Dee Shamrock became my parents. When I got there at the age of 13 years old, um, I was just another kid. Um, and most of the things that were said about me at that time was I'd either be dead or in prison. Um, very angry, hated the world, hated people, and constantly fighting. Very angry. I was outward with my anger. My father um, basically showed me how to take that anger and put it into something positive. I went into football and wrestling. And instead of being that punk kid that was going to be dead or in prison, all of a sudden I became relevant because I was good at something. I was good at football. I was good at wrestling. All of a sudden now, I became relevant. Well, as time went on, I ended up uh, going and playing college ball, did very well there, um, ended up going into the pro wrestling circuit. So I took that anger, I developed it into sports, became relevant, and then had the opportunity to now go make money with that anger, being able to put it in a constructive form and make money. And that form was pro wrestling. I started doing pro wrestling, I then got an opportunity over in Japan to do what we call hybrid pro wrestling, which was a form of MMA. Um, then got introduced to an organization called Pancras. That was probably in 91, 91, 92. I became the face of that organization. I became the first champion in that organization. In 93, after having that success in Pancras, uh, UFC came out. Now, UFC was a whole different level. Pancras was mixed martial arts. UFC in the early days was no holds barred. Anything goes. No time limit, no rules. You fought in a cage, which had never been seen before. I saw the same thing I saw from pro wrestling to um, the MMA no holds barred was I saw value. I saw things that were going to be popular. And so as I went into those things, I saw what I thought that the fans and the people were wanting to see. And so I went from one to the other to the other, ended up in the UFC, which in that time, no one understood what it was. No one understood what a submission was. So when we were winning, Hoist Gracie and myself winning by submissions, people were booing because they didn't know what it was. But of course, now we see and we know what it is. So my vision for this was right on every step of the way of knowing what was going to be popular, knowing what was going to be good. So I went from a success place, being the champion, moving into something uh, probably not very familiar to anyone and taking a chance of jumping into this and, and hoping it was going to be successful. And it was. I became Hall of Fame in wrestling. I got in the Hall of Fame in the UFC, first American champion in the UFC, first champion over in Japan in mixed martial arts. And so my success then led me into where I'm doing now, which is Valor BK, Valor Bare Knuckle. I saw the same thing that I saw during my career. Now, the one thing in my career that I always did was I listened to the fans. I listened to the media. I listened, and I listened to what people wanted. And it was just something that was important to me because whether they were hating me or loving me, as long as they were saying something, then they were involved and they had an interest in what I was doing. So I pushed that and understood that, which led me into being able to go into Valor BK, see this vision of bare knuckle. Because when you look at bare knuckle, I started out in the UFC when it was bare knuckle and then they put a glove on it. 
They did not put a glove on a hand to protect the head. They put a glove on the hand to protect the hand. So when they sold you the Bill of Rights of like they were trying to protect the fighter, that was not true. They wanted to protect the hand because the hand is what was going to win the fights, not the head. The head was the one getting hit and probably losing. So by protecting the hand, they now then made it actually more dangerous long term for the brain. So therefore, for me, as a fighter, I told myself if I ever had the chance to bring back the purity of fighting, the God-given talent of fighting, which is bare knuckle, that I would. And that's what we came up with, Valor Bare Knuckle, the first pure bare knuckle organization in the league. So as we brought in that, I also heard other things. Stand them up. Every time somebody got taken down, they wanted to see guys stand up. They understood that. They couldn't see the stuff on the ground. So when we got the Valor Bare Knuckle, it was like strictly bare knuckle boxing. Nothing on the ground because it's fast passed in action. The other thing I heard, and this is from the fans sitting down on the floor or in the audience, um, the things was like, well, I can't see him between the fence. It seems like something's always in the way or the ropes or the turnbuckle. So we took down the fence. We took down the turnbuckles. We took down the ropes. And we built a bout circle. So now when you're watching the fights, there's nothing in your way. So visibly, it's more fan friendly. Now we talk about the business part of it, right? Protecting the fighters. Now, for the longest time, I've seen fighters fight for three to five years, seven years, maybe max. And then when they're gone, it's over. It's like they're just pushed aside. What we are trying to do is change that with the crypto ecosystem is being able to build opportunities for fighters to keep making money after they're retired. And also being able to use it for other things like buying tickets and merchandise, being able to create a whole other ecosystem to be able to help more income through the crypto space. But most of all, protecting the fighters. You know, and that's something I think that when we first met with the captain in the Greed team, the one thing that they said was that they were trying to protect their musicians, their artists, people that were in the music music business, because that's the same kind of system where someone else is always taking the money. And then when they're done, they're done. So they're about protecting their musicians. We're about protecting our fighters. So it, I think that there's a huge opportunity with the combat space and the crypto space to be able to bring them together. I don't know quite how it works, but I, but I have enough knowledge to understand that it will. You just got to figure out a way it does. And that's why we have the team members we have now to put those pieces together. So um, I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you for listening. Uh, I am going to, Kick it back to Steve because I think he wants to get a little bit more into the tokenomics. And if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free after Steve goes through some of the stuff he needs to go through. Steve, I'll kick it back to you. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Awesome. Thank you, Ken. So, yeah, we'll talk about some of the utility. Uh, we talked about tokenomics. So what makes this different? Um, I can mention it. Now you understand why I wanted to bring up the point about protecting the fighters. Um, you know, it's not just about physically protecting them, but, you know, protecting their legacy, their legacies, um, being able to provide royalties to our athletes for anything that they do, any activities under the Valor umbrella, whether that be bare knuckle, NFL, or anything we do, like Andy had mentioned earlier, it's not just about bare knuckle, it's Valor sports. We're looking, you know, there was uh, other in Maddie, between Maddie, Ken, and, and Biggie Mike, Mick Mike, um, they have a Rolodex that reaches through all those categories. So we want to be able to provide all these benefits, not only to Valor Bare Knuckle right now, since that's our focus, but to these other categories as well. So number one, we're allowing them to protect and provide those royalties. But number two, we're giving the athletes and the fans a chance to own Valor Sports in a way that they never could before. So, I mean, 
the next thing is this you heard andy say you heard ken say that this is going to be an actual currency through the entire valor ecosystem that means online and offline so whether it be the event tickets or paying for your merch at the actual event itself um, with valor token or being able to subscribe to our ott platform like andy said it's like the espn plus app or netflix it's a video platform where people can subscribe and will release not only the live events but we'll also release exclusive content bonus material behind the scenes etc um, but being able to use that ecosystem online and offline but through that platform but also our ios and android apps so we're, we spent about the last six months building this technology and we've been thinking uh, or actually we've been discussing and implementing um incentives for our, for subscribers um, so, for example, if you're subscribed to our OTT, T, OTT platform or our iOS app or anything like that, you know, we you may automatically enter you into lotteries or NFT drops. Um, you can automatically get a discount if you're paying with our token. Um, you know, there's obviously the more, I call it a more traditional method. Uh, you know, everybody talks about NFTs. Obviously, we'll have our own NFTs. I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of footage, a lot of media that we're converting over. Um, from VHS tapes to MP4, but also there's magazines, um, there's uh, memorabilia from Ken's, uh, like physical memorabilia, there's experiences that we're going to be creating out of this. Um, you know, like, for example, how, if you could walk, if you could see Ken's life from when he was in high school, and this is how far back some of his VHS tapes go, video footage from day one from his high school football days where he actually broke his neck and that was two times you broke your neck, ken yes yeah. yeah yeah and 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 there's a photo we'll circulate one of these days but ken has this whole rack on his head but from those moments all the way to you know his hall of fame moments as early as um this most recently were the the rock and brett hartman and mcfoley they induced inducted him into the wrestling hall of fame you know, so being able to, you know, take all this media and all this history and put it into a virtual museum, put it into the ROTT platform, allow the fans and athletes to own these assets as well. Um, that's obviously the biggest part of this. And, you know, those men versus experience of being able to watch the bare knuckle or whatever fight event or other uh, any sporting event that we're hosting, watch that in the Decentraland metaverse. Same thing with the, mu the museum. So, and then last, uh, we talked about staking. Staking is going to be available at a launch on December 11th, 12th. So, um, I mean, that's that's a list of utility and every day that we're working. Thank you. We'll have a list, Stephen. Yeah, I think we lost him. Um, are you there, Steve? I'm sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I got a I got a phone call. Yeah, I apologize. I got a phone call and it, it disconnects to Telegram, I guess. Um, so what I was saying is we're obviously talking with the Greek team and our developers, and we're coming up with new use cases and ways to implement um, things beyond what I've already shared with you. It's exciting stuff. Uh, I can see you know you can do VIP uh, tickets for big fights and any of the Valor sports that you're. Uh, Wrong, uh, with the Valor coin uh, for holders and yeah, diamond hand whales and people getting involved. And could you do uh, limited edition from big fights as well, like the, uh, the you know the, the shoes they wear and everything, uh, and <clears throat> giveaways like that for the uh, investors? Yeah. Yes. So the, the goal is to to do all all that. Mm, it's exciting stuff. There's so many avenues you can go down, you know, connecting uh, their local boxing with Valor and uh, all the other sports. What, what other sports does Valor um, promote and uh, and uh, deal with as well, apart from the bare knuckle boxing as well? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question clearly. Uh, Valor sports, what, what other sports do they deal with apart from the bare knuckle boxing as well? All of it. This is Maddie. We're we're um, 
look, like we said, we're Valor Sports, the uh, lead. You know, the lead is with Bare Knuckle because we believe it will be disruptive. We believe that's a, a very fast-growing space right now, and we're focused on building the league, not only domestically but internationally. With that being said, you know, there's wrestling. Uh, Ken is an athlete who has, you know, great friends in the, you know, in the football world, in the wrestling world, in the MMA world, in the boxing world. <clears throat> we have friends from the basketball world, but, you know, we're not just, you know, we're not just looking at that as well. We have friends who do online chess, gaming, you name it. Anywhere that there's an audience in our ecosystem, our infrastructure fits, that's what we're going to focus on. We're a bit, you know, we're a bit hesitant to sort of overwhelm everyone right now with this big vision. And that's why we're focusing on bare knuckle first, because we know there's a tremendous audience there. And frankly, a built-in fan base. If you like UFC, if you like boxing, if you're a wrestling fan, et cetera, you know, you're going to follow this. We well, hey, Matty, also, too, on here, too, um, just on our TG, there's a guy on here that I've talked to several times. He played the in, in the NBA, and he's actually on listening to us right now. His name is Latrice Sprewell, Latrell Sprewell. So we do have connections, and some of them are still following mm -hmm. us, and one of them's on here now. Yeah, and we've been saying before earlier on, Ken, about, uh, you know, they have to retire at a certain point um, and they can get a passive income from the Valor coin. They, they could, uh, you know, uh, promote and do all sorts of things after they retire um, through the uh, Valor uh, sports uh, website and the, and the coin, yeah, going into the future for retired uh, sportsmen. Yes. So, so sorry, Maddie. I just wanted to jump on and let, let you no, guys know. No, no, that was you following us, so. No, that was great. Well said. And that's, you know, that's absolutely the truth. We have a handful of what we call sort of uh, MMA OGs, you know, uh, um, wrestling Olympians, you name it, that are already in our ecosystem on board waiting, you know, waiting to jump in like we haven't launched yet. We've simply been focused with with our guys at Greed and with our own development um, team on just building the infrastructure. And I think this is, maybe this is where we can uh, pass it over to Greed or uh, pass it over to I'm um, Captain to speak a little bit about how we linked up and why and sort of the mutual vision and how you fit into, you know, how you fit into really um, fast tracking us in the uh, crypto world. I think that might be something inter um, interesting. Sure. Uh, yeah, I could definitely jump in and, and thank you guys. I am. Um, the one thing I do want to bring up is, you know, when we're talking about NFTs and we've talked about already protecting the athletes and protecting them a couple of ways, one is from injuries. The other one is, you know, for their finances, it's the same thing that we were doing with musicians. The, the best part of the, this all fitting in is, you know, greed is anchored by greed music, the same way Valor's by Valor BK, but we have, a bunch of musicians and they have athletes. So we, we really cover a huge area. And, you know, again, every day you see people marketing and they're spending money on hiring influencers when what we've been able to do is start building up to where our utility is going to be the marketing. So we're not going to be hiring influencers. We're going to be bringing in people that are normally getting paid as influencers, giving them N NFTs and letting them promote themselves. But what that's taken me to is something really important that, no one really knows. Uh, I was asked myself, why don't we, why didn't greed, why are we building our own NFT marketplace? Why not just use OpenSea? And it's not just because, you know, on OpenSea, you can use Polygon and Mint for cheaper. One of the things that I found out, and I had to find this out, and, and most of you that know me know I'm not a tech guy, but I have to talk to the tech guys to figure things out. And, you know, if you were to go for an example, you're any artist and you mint on OpenSea, you get your, whatever you're going to get, you sell your, your art, you're going to get your full price right then and there. But then there's always that, that royalty. If you put 10% royalty in, you get that royalty every time it gets sold. Well, there's a, that's a truth, but there's also a misconception that I found out. 
The truth is, yes, you will get it as long as it stays within the platforms that honor that code. Something that most people don't know is if it gets traded off to a platform that doesn't honor that code, you lose your royalty. And that's not just OpenSea. That's every platform that's out there right now. There is not one platform that can guarantee that you will. So I brought on our techs. And I mean, if you go to the greed uh, token.com, you can see the tech team. You can see some of the guys that we've brought on. You know, we've grown a little bit. So we had to get to a different level. And the techs that are building out our platform, our NFT platform, are coding it so that the NFTs will never be able to be traded to a platform where you lose your royalty. It can move to OpenSea. It can move to many other ones that are out there but it'll never be traded or moved to one that you can't. So within the next four weeks, when we have our platform, we're going to be the only NFT marketplace that can guarantee that. And trust me, I will be calling every other platform out. And yes, some of them may figure it out and add code later, but it's the first thing that we've gotten. So when we talk about the things that we're doing, working together, I, I, I've been talking, I mean, if anyone knows me and greed, what we've been talking about, one of the big things has been the metaverse. I got really lucky uh, and when we did our private sale and our launch, I was raising the money to go buy property in the metaverse. Well, I happened to go, it was like a Thursday, right before, I just, there was a feeling. We were supposed to all get together, talk about what we were gonna, what buildings we were gonna buy or you know, look at it as a team. And that was supposed to be on the weekend, and the whole plan. I had this weird feeling on a Thursday. I went online, I called my NFT um, consultant, not my NFT, my, uh, my metaverse consultants. And I said, listen, I can't wait till Saturday. I've got this weird feeling. I need to buy it now. So we went in and we bought two properties or how, whatever you want to call them. It was a six acre estate or six parcel estate and a nine parcel estate. And an hour after the purchases was when Decentraland jumped up about 87%. And then by the next day, it was up 400%. So luckily, we got in and were able to purchase two nice estates to you know build off of in the metaverse before it made its big run. So part of it is, yes, we have what we're doing there, but it also opens up the opportunity for, you know, we're going to have live streaming for concerts, but it was like, okay, we'll just do it as the greed arena. So we could also live stream, you know, bare knuckle boxing there. So now you can get together with your friends, meet up. You know, if you go to Decentraland, you can go and meet up, watch it live stream from the Greed Arena. So when they're talking about the things we're going to be doing together, we'll be able to uh, stream the their uh, bare knuckle boxing there. And also when you talk about like the museums that they have, and again, it's a lot of Ken stuff. And when you guys hear them talk about other sports, they're not necessarily bringing in other sports, but the athletes that they have that are retired now, or some of them are still working, They've already been talking about wanting to do like NFTs and collectibles. And, you know, the, the cool thing about uh, Decentraland is also wearables. You know, you can do a wearable and have it based on that athlete. So we're, we're able to give them a whole new area of income. And again, now that we can guarantee them that they'll always receive their royalties because they'll be programmed to the NFTs, it locks in. So, yeah, we'll, we'll probably have a two layer, you know, of the on these estates that we have. We're going to have a museum and places where you can see galleries of NFTs or a museum for like the Hall of Fame of the UFC boxers, or the UFC fighters or um, wrestlers or musicians or uh, NFL, NBA for everyone. So we're going to have all that built in the metaverse. And it is being built now, guys, in the past. Um, what I'm hearing is probably within the next six weeks, I should have at least the first things that I need in the metaverse, which are we're doing something different. I won't bring up what I'm doing on, on my end that I need, but the second part of it is that live streaming for concerts or for events. This way we'll be ready for Valor Bare Knuckle as well. So we should have that here uh, told within the, by the middle of January. So there's that. Plus, you know, we put money into building a special staking platform, which is going to be the Greed Vault. That's why when they first come out, they'll be able to stake there. So, you know, since we have a good strategic partnership and we're working well together, we're just, sharing our technology and sharing stuff and it's just been you know on both ends it's it's a mutually beneficial relationship that's been great and we see from here we're going to build something really big mm, that's great and <clears throat> i can see yeah like say the massive back catalogs of these sporting stars uh you know can bring in massive revenue even if they're retired through nft uh the, the idea of the whole uh video show of uh, back catalogs uh, great i don't think uh, that many nfts have looked into doing 
15, 20 minute uh, videos of, yeah, yeah, sporting legends uh, fighting in the past in all sorts of arenas. And uh, if we could go maybe into the bare knuckle boxing, uh, so that's going to become a league of its own in the future. Uh, Ken, how, how's that going to work? Yeah, we're looking to, to build a league, not just a, just one fight or here and there. Yeah, we're looking to build a league. And I'll, I'm going to let Maddie talk a little bit more about our – because we're different than most. We're, we're trying to build a business structure and a league. So, Maddie, if you want to go in a little more in detail of that for, for these people. Sure, I'll, sure, I'll give you the 30,000-foot uh, view of the league. We're um, – we're launching in 2022. We're going to do four shows here in the U.S., primarily Florida. And, um, you know, then from Florida, we're moving into Europe. We're moving into Greece. I mean, you name it. We've, we've worked very, very hard making sure that we build a footprint not just in the U.S., but internationally, so we can draw from, you know, great fighters, you know, fan base and fighters internationally. Our first champion's actually from uh, uh, U.K. Is Godbeer Ken from U.K.? Yes. Yes, sir, from, uh, from uh, U.K. So you'll, you'll see some big announcements in January. Frankly, we've been very quiet about this because – We've just been very, very quietly and very strategically building. But, you know, we have folks like myself, folks like uh, Ken Shamrock, folks like our, our other friend, Mike, who's not on this phone call, uh, Todd, Richard, all with fighting backgrounds. Uh, Richard is a phenomenal matchmaker for example, uh, Todd. Todd has been a promoter of numerous fights, both boxing and MMA. We really have the relationships and the resources, both nationally and internationally, to build this league. And so that's really been the focus. And, you know, you you look at you look at somewhere like Japan. You know, Ken was the first Pancration champion there. He has a tremendous name there, tremendous relationships. Why wouldn't we be there? You know, wh why wouldn't we not not only stream our fights there, but why wouldn't we do, you know, America versus Japan? pan america versus usa so that just gives you a little bit about what we're you know what we're building and what we're doing i hope awesome yeah. what's the legal area of bare knuckle fighting around the world i know there's quite a few states in america in arizona and florida yeah it's, it's fine um in europe uh, whereabouts is it allowed in europe to uh, do that fight so would it have to go over to the states i'm not sure no it's legal it's definitely legal in, in England. They're doing shows over there. We just, um, two, three weeks ago, we were on the phone and we had a follow-up last week uh, with some promoters down there. So Bare Knuckle is very strong uh, in the UK um, and in the US. Uh, I think there's seven states that are open right now. And there's just like when the beginning days with the UFC, when I first came into it, the very first one, there was only only one state that allowed okay. just put him on mute sorry yeah go ahead ken yeah there's um only one state that allowed it the early days in the ufc and um they were doing that in colorado well then once they saw the that it was kind of this popular it wasn't like a popular thing yet but they would go in and get these these things where you could do a show or one event and so you could do that. But after people started to see it, just like now where there's five or six states, seven states now that are opening up to bare knuckle, because now they see that it's not um, a thing that people don't understand or illegal. So all other states are starting to open up to it. So that that's right now. That's where it's at right now. In the beginning stage of the UFC, when it was just starting out, it wasn't that it was it was like illegal because they knew what it was. It was illegal because there was no sanctioning body. So, but once you go to these states and, and you go to do an event, now you start having sanctioning bodies to be able to legalize it and get it legalized in each state. So wherever we go, those states will then open up. Awesome. And we've got, uh, we've got Elizabeth Warren, who's a bare knuckle fighter in the UK, and Jane Count, who was the first female uh, world champion uh, boxer. Uh, would you look at exp expanding uh, into a female league as well? 
in the future? We're already doing it. We've got, um, we're in talks with um, one one now that's, in in our opinion, um, pound for pound, one of the best fighters, women, female fighters in the world. Um, and we're in talks with her. So if when we do it, it, it it's going to be big. It's not just going to be two girls out there fighting. It's going to be the two girls out there fighting. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's so many uh, areas to expand in going into the future. So, um, yeah, if we could go back over the tokenomics, so how will the token link in with the Bala Sports um, and investors can get B&B rewards just for holding the, the Bala token? Um, what's the private sale um, minimum maximum buys and how much uh, is the hard cap going to be? We can still get involved with that, can Yeah, so but the uh, there's no minimum on the private sale. The maximum buy is 50 BNB. It's locked for three months, but it's locked for three months from launch. But unlike where a lot of tokens are vested and they get them handed out to them, you're you're going to be locked in your own wallet. It's something I did with greed because we wanted to make sure that you know if you're the advantage you have is by getting the extra 30 percent, which gives you the extra you know rewards BNB. So they'll be in your wallet. So we did put, you know, create the code to where it locks it in your own wallet, but the BNB rewards are available. Uh, the hard cap on it, I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm actually driving to pick up my son. I believe it's 750 BNB. Um, and if someone, I don't know if someone could drop the link in there or drop uh, Glenn the link to it, we have it coming through the greed launch pad right now. So you can see it just linking up right there. Awesome. And, and then the staking feature you're going to be able to use from the start, even with your lock tokens. And yeah. Yeah. So we're launching our greed vault. I mean, you know, we talk about farming and staking. I was like, well, greed's all about money. It's greed. So we're going to call it a vault. We're launching the vault on December 10th. Their pre sale is the 11th. And then uh, their launch is on the 12th. So by the time they launch, we're going to have them set up in there with their own coin to, um, stake as well instantly when they're out awesome and how, how's the staking work is it locked for 15 days 30 days and how does it work for investors so there's going to be different it's not that it's locked you'll, you'll have a penalty for pulling out early so we're going to have different levels in there the other cool thing we're going to have is where you can boost your staking percentage so it is a little bit different than anything that, well, I'm sure there's some other ones that have been done. I just haven't seen it. But you'll be able to um, to boost your percentage by adding some extra in. And it's going to – I can't give you – I don't actually know the exact right now how it's being done. I know we were doing it with, uh, like, a 30-day or a this or that. If you – and the penalties are the, the – you know, of course, the longer you hold it in, there'll be no penalty. If you pull it out sooner, there's a, a penalty to pull out. But we're trying to put more of – an advantage to stay in by adding extra to boost it because if you pay for the boost you may as well keep it in because you're going to get a higher percentage rate in return great yeah uh, and it, it all being and, and the reason it's it's all being that's what's being worked on now as we're working it through to the 10th so as we get closer i'll have more information on that great yeah i can open it up to the rest of the team if you've got any questions for bella coin or ken or steve or uh, captain norson yeah, I mean, it looks like you guys have an absolutely tremendous vision here, and uh, I don't really have so many, I mean, such a question, because that was so incredibly informative. I just think that this is, you know, a really great vision, and, you know, even from the start when you were talking about the safety of the fighters, I mean, that really resonated with me as do I played contact sports growing up and stuff, so I think that's phenomenal, and, you know, I really look forward to seeing how your vision plays out, and hopefully can become an investor and supporter of your group, your token. Cool. Yeah, I, 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 I got something, Glenn. So uh, thanks, guys, for coming out. This looks really amazing. Like you, it's, you seem like you have the team and, and everything ready to, to truly build something. We get a lot of people in here that try to innovate or improve or whatever, whereas uh, we get people like you that are actually doing the work, showing us what they have did. And, and like when you see a roadmap from people like you, you know that's going to happen, right? So, OK, uh, enough. But I do have a question. Uh, it's uh, regarding the NFTs. So you mentioned you're digitizing some tapes and you're looking at turning those into NFTs. Uh, does that mean that the person owning the NFT gets to use it um, uh, commercially too, or will they just be able to buy it? 
I think that's something that we're, we're still to, to be determined. Captain, unless you have something else to uh, input to that. Yeah, well, I mean, typically for, for the good thing about the NFT, it's more that it's a collectible for you. So you're the one that owns that. There's different ways to look at it. I mean, I would have to talk more to them about it. I believe it's only good for them to use it. If they want to use it commercially, it's only going to help promote it. But that person owns the NFT. That's going to probably be on a, an individual basis too, depending on, you know, each, whether it's a fighter or it could be, you know, uh, an NFL athlete or one of the musicians, it's going to really have to be per person. And, you know, the NFTs might be structured differently. Some might be a one of one, some might be like one of 10. There might be a different ways to do it depending on them because we can't, you know, without owning the actual rights to each individual, we can't really tell you how it's going to go. We could suggest things, but it's going to, I think a lot of that's going to be on an individual basis. Me personally, like for, we're doing some collectible uh, NFT music, like music that's been, if there was a song, for an example, it's a hit song out there by, um, uh, what is Jay-Z and there's 10 other versions. No one's ever heard different beats. And we were to NFT each of those, you know, the person doesn't really have the rights to them, but they could use it and promote it. It's, but they have that as a collectible, but the more they're promoting it, it's only promoting the NFT and bringing more attention back to the platform. So, uh, you know, what I would say to do is different than what an artist might allow. And that could be an artist, meaning, you know, music or athlete as the artist at the time when we bring them out. All right. Yeah, gotcha. Thanks. I, I would yeah. like to bring up one more thing that's kind of interesting because everyone's always, you know, wonder about marketing and traditional marketing. And this is what I really love about, you know, this project, which is a lot of it, it piggybacks what I'm doing basically with, with greed, with music, then with sports. Now, you guys got to think about this. Someone asked, well, well what about the marketing? What's going to keep this up? And it was another AMA. Well, what's going to keep the coin going? Well, the cool thing is in the first year, if they do, and, and I've asked them some of the numbers. So if they do four fights, eventually they want to do one a month. But if you do four fights, and we, I said, well, okay, so if we do a fight in February, how many fights are there? 15. So that means there's 30 fighters. So the other cool thing is each of those fighters now is going to be part of Valor, an own part of Valor. That means they're going to promote it, them, their friends, their family. So there's two parts to promoting it. You know, Valor, BK, and whenever any fight is out, is going to be promoted like it normally would. The cool thing is it's like a twofer as Valor is being promoted. And that's where like Steven and Andy come in with their specialty. Well, Valor coins also going to be piggybacking right on that same marketing budget, which is a lot different than people who come out with just a coin budget. So it's, it's going to be promoted either way, but then you have the, you know, the coin promoted as well. But the next step that was kind of interesting is once you bring the athletes in and they have a piece, a, I always joke. It's like, we shill our own bags. It's like, Hey, dude, you just got coins. Shill your own bag. Be out there tweeting. Get your friends to tweet them. Get because the more they do, the better it's going to be. So now you have thirty athletes. The other cool thing about athletes is they've got fight clubs. You know, so now if American Top Team has a fighter in there, they'll be promoting them as well, and that's a huge following. So now, as all that's getting promoted, between promoting Valor Bare Knuckle or the fighters individually it's always going back to promoting the coin. So if you start looking at it, you know, so you have 30 fighters now, first fight. Over the first year, it's talking about 120. As it keeps going, if these people keep shilling their own bags, and, you know, one of the things, you know, I wanted them to do, and again, it would be up to them, is locking their coins up. If the fighters are getting coins here, they get their B&B rewards, but lock them up for a year, so there's a reason for them to keep shilling their own bag. So even if they're not fighting in the second fight, keep promoting it, because the more they promote it, their bags just go up. So it's really cool that you could actually turn, you know, the utility into the marketing. Plus, you know, the big name fighters come out and they're part of Valor. You, you know, when they do a card, not everyone's going to be big, but you're going to have some big name guys. You know, they're not getting paid to be influencers, but now they're marketing for free. Or the same thing with any of the people that, you know, they were talking to. I know, you know, some of the names from the NFL, I won't get, but there's some like, you know, Super Bowl champions and a lot of big names and guys who are retired they could bring in. You know, now you're not paying them to say something or promote it, we're NFTing them. And also, you know, we're talking about doing like wearables and other stuff for the metaverse. So they're going to promote themselves. That's the cool thing. Most people are paying these people to say something. Instead, we're offering them an opportunity to make money and they can shill their own bag. So it, it really is an interesting concept that, you, you know, the marketing is going to be used as a, you know, a two for one. It's going to be marketing the whole project as far as 
the reality in the real world, but it gets the coin at the same time. Also, yeah, Dan, yeah. We, have huge, yeah. we have a huge opportunity to be able to grow um, the space too, because uh, some of the things through uh, my social uh, platform, um, which is over a half million um, on there, um, it, it, there's always people, most of the people don't know crypto. Um, and most of the people in the combat space don't know crypto. So we have a really good opportunity to be able to grow the space by trying to merge the two together. And I think with Andy and Steve's tech experience and marketing experience through these, these social media platforms, we're able to draw in so many new people into the crypto space and be able to help grow it. If we can, which we will, um, merge the two together so that there's more people having an understanding of what crypto is and, and, and get an understanding of how to get involved in, in it with us. Yeah, the unique sort of marketing aspect of Valor Sport and the coin uh, is probably the first for the BSC. So it's very, very uh, uh, lucky for the BSC to to get a launch like this. It, it's uh, the marketing is probably on another level not seen before in crypto. Uh, so that's very exciting. Um, yeah. So yeah, if we could maybe go a bit more into the marketing, Matty. Uh, plans going forward after launch. Uh, what you're going to be doing? Um, pushing that uh, Valor token and the Valor Sports name out there um, to the investors and just uh, get this uh, Valor coin going to, you know, the galaxies far, far away. Sorry, was that for me? No, that yeah. was for Steve. I think Steve, oh, Steve is it, yeah. I'll say one thing before Steve jumps in here just to, just to sort of set the table. I think we have the opportunity to, uh, to educate the industry. And I think like, like many new industries, the opportunity for scale is all about early adoption. And so I've been involved in spaces where, whether it was the CBD industry and or, um, you know, many folks may not know this, but back in the day, the gaming industry and the movie industry um, technologically were very different. They did not work with each other. And so you had, you know, leaders who, who helped sort of bridge the gap in the share technology and sort of visualize the um, future. That's what we're going to do. We're going to invest in, you know, getting the average Joe or Jane, if you will, involved in the space. And we're also mm -hmm. going to simplify how that's done. Even now, you know, when you set up your wallet, it's it's a bit challenging. You know, it's it's uh, especially if you're not very savvy, we're we will fix that or we will do our best job to fix that. And I think, Stephen, maybe uh, you could come over the top a little bit. Yeah, I will. Um, from a technology aspect, this is kind of how Andy and I met, um, you know, building systems. And when I say building systems, I mean building uh, web websites that were the equivalent to, uh, you know, a college experience, like walking through, signing on, onboarding, educating them, you know, telling them how to set up their wallets, how to set up their domain name, what is an affiliate, what is traffic, how do you buy traffic? Like that's how we specialize in building sales funnels, building educational, creating tools to make marketing and you know, getting the business out there easier. But something that Ken had said, and you know, uh, the the market is combat sports or general. There's something that I saw Sandbox doing, and this is something that um, it can be very easily incorporated. For example, with our OTT platform, our iOS or Android app. Um, when someone signs up for an account with us to become a subscriber, if they're going to fund their account, we can easily generate a wallet for them, just like Sandbox does. I forget their partnership, um, but it's just an API call to a wallet which you know we would have a you know wallet connect or something but there's tools that we can incorporate into our technology that the basic user doesn't have to really understand so much what is crypto or how they get it or you know what the purpose of nft is but we can create the desire for that by doing the lotteries by giving them rewards if they're subscribed for a period of time and then educating them what they can do with those rewards or if they get an nft 
you know, that will come about naturally with the community. It's kind of like reverse engineering it. Um, and I'm going to pass it to Andy because he really is in charge of our marketing plan. I know we have a 17 week long plan um, that includes all type of things. But Andy, do you want to take it from here? Yeah, sure. No worries. I'll touch uh, start right on the 17 week marketing plan that we have for Valor, which focuses us on the next event that we have. Obviously, uh, that's going to be a big focus. But at the same time, we're going to be highlighting the Valor coin into all of our media and advertising where we're going to be uh, showing our incentives for people to use or buy the Valor coin, as well as uh, teaching them about the utility, et cetera. Uh, targeting is going to be four fights per year for the first year and then uh, quickly and heavily scaling from there. Athletes uh, are going to also be promoted to promoted to fight and they're going to be promoting valor as well as the coin because they're going to obviously have some interest in it as they're coming on board uh we'll be list we'll be listing on poo coin coin market cap coin gecko uh obviously ken social is over a half a million that we'll be constantly marketing to uh ken continues to conduct amas also conducting interviews on podcasts radio news outlets about valor where we're going to obviously be mentioning through all of those things about the Valor ecosystem, uh, giveaways, contests, meet and greets, free ticket events. These are things that Ken gets booked for constantly already and has been for throughout his career. And we're going to start highlighting uh, our Valor tokens and ecosystem as we're doing those events as well. It's only um, avenues oh, you can go down. I was wondering if you would be looking into doing a, a video game in the future of bare knuckle fighting with everyone's favorite fighters and things like that uh, for the uh, Valor coin. Yeah, we've actually tossed that idea. Actually, Matt, Maddie actually has close relationships with the uh, gaming company, and uh, he's developed a few games himself. So it's not off the table. Uh, it's definitely something we've we've thought about doing. Um, but where we fit it in is just. Uh, we have to have that discussion. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Most right. definitely. As any well any as questions? Captain, for Austin his, uh, Captain Austin's got some pretty cool ideas where we'll be uh, collaborating with him in his arena, if you will, in the metaverse, where we can stream live fights in there as well and do some, some pretty awesome yeah. stuff. Definitely on the table. Yeah, and obviously every time we go into a new AS, a new AMA, you know, we're getting input from you know individuals like yourself. Um, so if there's any anything that you can advise us on or turn us on to, please, you know, if there's any questions or anything, we're here to answer them. Um, but we're always also interested in you know what we could do be doing better or what you would like to see, like suggesting the video game. You know, so if, if there's any input that I would love to open the floor real quick for anybody, um, you know, to to provide some insight or ask any additional questions. Yeah. I think uh, all call back. You had a question. How you doing, guys? Uh, how's it going? Okay. Doing great. Thank you. Cool, yeah. man. Okay, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. Here. Ken, don't knock me out, yeah. <laughs> Hard to. <laughs> okay. So take it easy with me, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh. You. You. you was covering about uh, bringing new people into crypto. Yeah. Um. But how are you going to make it easy for them? Because, like you said, um, I have issues with people obviously opening their wallets, how to open a wallet, or what is a wallet, because they don't realize pers basically that they're on personal bank, so they're on security and whatnot, so they don't get scammed and lose their wallets. So how would you educate people? uh into like buying your token holding your token and how to buy it and how would you make it like a uh like easy transactions as well like for easy for someone to buy like do you know when you go and buy like something from the shop with a credit card you just swipe in and you don't think about it so will you have a system like that or do do people have to go over the hurdle of having a wallet well, and well let me let me answer and then i'm going to kick it over to whoever whether it's captain or steve or somebody want to answer that the technical part of it but I would like to say on the front end of that is basically that the things that I've been seeing through, you know, my social media platforms is that people 
People want to get involved because they have an opportunity to get involved with me. People want to get involved because they have an opportunity to get involved with other celebrities that we're bringing in to be a part of the crypto space. So a lot of the stuff we're doing is we're enticing people to get involved. People want to buy things. People want to get involved. They will always want something, right, to, so that they're involved with the celebrity. And the same way, the other way is, is celebrities being able to be involved with the actual fans. So we're connecting those dots to be able to entice them in. As far as the technology part, I'm going to turn that over to the captain or Steve to answer more of that technology question on how to make it easier, if we can. Yeah, so real quick on the technology aspect. Um, have you signed up recently for uh, Sandbox by any chance? No, I haven't, no. I, I would advise you to check it out. And because it gives, and I use that as an example because the sign on process is we already have e commerce. So we could accept regular credit cards. They could deposit a certain amount of funds inside their wallet, you know, for e commerce, traditional OTT or purchase. Etc. The aspect is where we swap that dollar for token, or we're creating a crypto wallet, and that's why I refer to Sandbox because they're using the API. Um, I think it's a, uh, I can't remember the exact wallet they're using, but they're using a, a, a wallet that's allowing them to create a single sign-on process. And from the technology aspect, it makes the process of signing up as easy as connecting your Facebook or connecting a MetaMask or Bitsky or OpenSea, something you already have. So they can either create a standard account with us, just if they're a general user, they're not worried about signing up for crypto or getting involved with that's something that we incentivize later. And that goes back to, let's say they get in, entered in, let's say they've been subscribed for 30 days and everybody that's been subscribed for 30 days is gonna be entered in to win an NFT. Great, so I'm a general user, I won the NFT lottery, so how do I access my NFT? Well, I'm going to have to have to learn how to do that. So obviously there will be high how to guides, the documentation, not to say that everybody's going to go through that stuff, but you know, we do have a how to purchase Valor coin page already, which is a four step process video that we've already made to educate them, you know, create your crypto.com account, create your ulti, create, like walk them through that process. Not going to solve the problem for everybody. But again, it comes back to the drive and what Ken was saying is how much they actually want to be involved. Now, I'm not, we're not looking to target every single individual that signs up for every single fan. There's going to be a fan base that will never get involved. They don't believe in it, and it is what it is. That's not our target. But there's a huge amount of individuals from the crypto space and from the fan base. And what Ken's response has been, and just very little, it's been mostly word of mouth uh, marketing at this point. That little response that we have gotten has driven us to say, okay, how can we make this process easier? So when someone signs up to our website, maybe we automatically generate a wallet for them. Or, and I'm not the developer, so we have to obviously talk with the greed team and the aspect of these. But I saw how easy it was done with Sandbox. And when I went through that process, it made me say, that's something that Andy and I have been doing for years, making single sign-on processes and just saying, okay, here, how to do this or what you, you access. It's a, it's a little bit of an educational curve, but I have the confidence um, in our team and the, the fan base, like Ken said, and how active like, they want to be involved and giving them, again, obviously rewards that, you know, NF, whether it be NFT or certain videos that are only accessible for certain, you know, uh, steps that had to be completed or something like that so that will all come later obviously it's still developing but i just wanted to share that and i encourage you to go to the sand up sign sandbox sign up process because um you know i i created a a new wallet just to kind of go through that process because i wanted to experience it as a, someone who didn't have a wallet how easy it would be to onboard into sandbox so we take these concepts um not only from other business models that we've worked on in the past, um, but things like this obviously help when we see them working in the real world environment. Yeah, you should look at uh, there's another company called ETN. They're based in the UK. Uh, they do transactions at 160 countries around the world. Uh, easy transactions. That's another company that you should have a look at and see if you can find something from there as well. Cool. Absolutely. What was the what was it called again? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, e for Echo. T for Tango. End for November, ETN. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Cool.
Yeah, and then I know a lot of companies offer credit card uh, purchases off the website. You can incorporate that to make it easier for, for investors to get involved with the Ballot Coin. Um, it's a very exciting project. Uh, I think the VSC is very lucky to have Ken and uh, and uh, Captain Awesome and Matty. And, Sorry, Glenn, uh, can I just add Steve. one thing? Yeah. Uh, Ken, because of you, I'm going to invest, yeah? Just because of you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. Oh, brother. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to the future for uh, Ballot Coin. Uh, I don't think we have any more qu questions. If you want to recap over what we've been saying, because people have been coming in, going uh, the chat going up and down. Uh, yeah, and then I uh, can finish the recording, get that shared across the BSC and crypto space, get the name out there for Ballot Coin. Uh, it's very exciting. I think project coming to the BSC, and it's going to make it go more mainstream uh, and get people involved that haven't been involved with crypto before because it's got the real life. Uh, sports aspect, you know, so it's just linking everything together for the future. It's really exciting. Cool. Yeah. We appreciate you, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, look forward to actually learning this thing more and more. Um, but it's uh, it's been quite a ride. So thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. All right. Yeah. Take care. Now you've had an AMA, you're welcome to come back, keep us updated on the sports and the token and the launch. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our investors are going to get involved with uh, uh, the Valor coin. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you can keep us updated, that'd be great. And, uh, yeah, if there's any questions, anyone listening to the recording, when we send that around uh, uh, the crypto world, uh, you can go over to Valor Coins Telegram, we'll, uh, ask us here in main chat, and we'll get you over there safely to the official one because I think there'll be some copies popping up. Like we get on Telegram, uh, yeah, we'll get you to the official one and uh, you can get involved there. Uh, I'm looking forward to the future of Alacoin. Thanks very much, Ken and the team, for coming today. Uh, yeah, looking forward to the future.